Hello and welcome to another technical takedown the hard way. In today's video, I want you to take a look at this. The rise of the EV truck continues. At CES, GM unveiled its next electric truck, the Chevy Silverado. Look at this vehicle. The all new Chevrolet Silverado and its all electric drivetrain. This vehicle promises a lot. It's going to be a truck which of course is going to be electrified which is going to make it useful for many people who are either working commercially or people like us overlanders people who are planning to go camping or long distance driving in it long distance driving in an electric vehicle 400 miles general motors are promising that this silverado will be able to produce so i think we can knock off maybe 50 to 70 miles off that number if we want to give it a realistic number but even at that 300 miles even 300 miles for me the, the vehicle that i'm planning to use now i'm planning to use and i'm planning to do 200 mile stints in it if it if, if we could go overland in it we would because of course an electric drivetrain offers so much promise for people in the overlanding community. I mean, we don't have many options in terms of electric vehicle. Is this Silverado the future? Is electricity the future for overlanding? Would you buy an electric vehicle in the future if you wanted to go overlanding in it? And what would need to happen in order for you to use an electric vehicle for overlanding? Well, I'm going to try and answer these questions in today. First, in today, first, today, first, I'm going to first, I'm going to ask you to please like, subscribe, share, and click the bell notification. If you can do that for me, that'll be really great. It is completely free, and it will help the channel. Thank you very much. So let's get into things. Let's have a look at some of the positives of driving an overlander with an electric drivetrain. So. One of the positives is that the vehicle is going to be simple, okay? So the engine, an electric engine, is far more simple than an internal combustion engine. And the simpler a vehicle is, the less chance you have of that vehicle breaking down. So that's one massive positive. Another positive is that the electric motors also give instantaneous torque. So if you're planning to go on some pretty tough terrain and you need that torque, instantly to bring you and your vehicle which is normally overweight with you guys yeah <laughs> if you want to make it sure that you have that ability to bring your vehicle pretty much anywhere then an electric drivetrain will give you that option number three is the way you can use an electric vehicle as a daily so if i had this silverado i'd probably stick a camper on the back and when i wasn't using it i'd just take the camper off you know and then use that vehicle as a daily you can do that in one of these electric vehicles why because especially in a city like vienna where it is so much more practical to have an electric vehicle even a big one because you get tax incentives and parking incentives here it's going to be a major plus what you don't want to do is drive around in a big dirty diesel vehicle around the center of Vienna. Not only will it cost you too much, it's going to make you look a little bit ridiculous having one of these big vehicles with a Mad Max style uh, bumper on the front and uh, a big uh, snorkel and so forth. You don't want that, okay? So I think having an electric drivetrain in a vehicle like this, you will be able to save money in more than one way. Of course, you're going to save money because you're not going to need to buy another vehicle. You can use that vehicle as a daily. Another way you'll save money is that you will have an electric drivetrain. And with the cost of fuel today, boy, you are going to save so much. Electricity here, it would cost about 12 to 13 euros worth of electricity to get you anywhere in between 350 to 400 miles which is nothing in comparison to the 100 euros i put in our little mercedes-benz not too long ago the cost of fuel has doubled it's really eating away at us we don't drive the car that often but even though we don't drive the car that often we can really feel it in our pockets this summer 
Thank you very much, Exxon. So let's take a look at a few of the negatives. The negatives are that your range is going to be limited in more than one way, okay? Electric vehicles, a 400 mile electric vehicle like this Silverado, okay, they're, they're giving 400 miles, but in reality, you're, you're looking at around 330 to 350, and that is a real world uh, range. I would be surprised if it was more. You never know, you know, but I'll always like to go on the side of caution just to be safe. So let's say 330 miles. That's still a very good range, especially for an electric vehicle. But once you've modified the vehicle and you've stuck your camper on the back, it's going to be significantly less than that. So guys, you got to look at it in that way. It's, it's, your range is going to be severely limited. And not only that, but you would have to get to the next plug-in charger. The plug-in charger infrastructure, that hasn't really been fully developed all around the world. Yes, in our little corner of Europe it is, and in uh, Australia perhaps, and in the United States. But everywhere else, nah, they're, they're keeping it old school, you know? Diesel, benzene, okay? If you have a diesel and a benzene fueled vehicle, you can drive anywhere in the world except for Antarctica. You know, and even saying that, you might be able to drive to Antarctica if you bring enough fuel with you because you can always bring extra fuel tanks. You, you can't do that with a vehicle with, a, uh, with an electric drivetrain, okay? You're always dependent on the system, which is one thing I dislike about electric vehicles. You know, overland, overlanding is all about free. Overlanding is all about free. Overlanding is all about free. Overlanding is all about freedom. So, you know, being dependent on the system in order to fuel up your car. I mean, yeah, for me, that would be a problem anyway. But, you know, hopefully we will get to the point in which we will be able to bring our solar blankets where we can go out into the middle of nowhere and charge up our vehicles in a day or two. That would be perfect and that would get us on our way to our next destination or to our next charging point. I think it would be difficult to go overlanding even now but in 10 years time i genuinely believe it's going to be common as muck and i think we all need to be ready for that another positive is having all these plug-in points you're not going to need to bring a a, a power uh, box with you because you're going to be able to use your vehicle as your source of electricity if you're not clattering the electricity i'd always bring a second source of electricity anyway but you know you can depend on this vehicle to have enough electricity so you can use your induction cooker or whatever so I so guys I think those are pretty much all the negatives right do you guys have any other negatives about overlanding with an electric drivetrain let me know in the comments section below it'll be really good to hear your opinions and whether I have missed out on anything whether or not I believe in electricity or not is irrelevant okay electricity is the future it's everybody's future, even our future. And, you know, it's sad to say that um, because I still think we've got a lot of hurdles to jump over. But I do believe that in 10 years' time, conversations like this will be irrelevant and we will all be driving vehicles with an electric drivetrain. And I do believe when the technology gets better, it's going to make all our lives better and it's going to make the beautiful crystal clear environments that we generally tend to go to when we drive remote we're going to be able to do our best to keep those environments as crystal clear as possible when we drive our nice clean electric vehicles and leave that environment better than what it looked like when we got there so guys that's all i've got time for for today i'd like to thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one tarara bit